hell is fighting me. But it's nice, you've got to concentrate, it's not, it's not doing it all for you, which a lot of new cars do. Fucking fifth gear you again then. So welcome back to another episode of Geared and today, yes, we are at Alton Park, my favourite UK circuit. Last time I was here was in Rob's Time Attack Evo 7 RS. If you haven't watched that one, click the link up above to give that a watch. But today we'll be going out and driving Dave's Clio 172 and this has had a lot of changes, a lot of money spent on it. This is a full on track car. So we're going to speak to him, see what's been done and then we're going to take it out for some laps. Okay then Dave, Clio 172, yep. how long have you owned this? Uh, a little over two years now, Yeah. I think it's coming to two years, yeah, it's a yeah. uh, long, long driven project. <laughs> so it's not quite standard anymore though? No, not standard at all, uh, it's you know, fairly stripped out, it's, it is MOT believe it or not, but uh, <laughs> it's not enjoyable on the road in any way. So. so we just go briefly on what's been done to it, so yeah. we start with the, the main bit, so Engine wise, so it was a Clio 172 engine, but a little bit's been done to it. Yeah, so um, it's a mixture of actually two engines. Oh, is it? So, so it's a 182 bottom end okay. uh, with a phase one 172 head, so it's got slightly bigger um, inlets and stuff like that. It's, uh, but other than that, fairly standard, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, you know, other let's than, have a little uh, look. Other than inlets, it's had some valves. We all know they like to drop them. Yeah, and you've got different injectors in this. Yeah, uh, yeah. 197 injectors uh, to suit the cat. Uh, the, uh, sorry, I've got cat cams as well. It's a uh, 421 cat cam. Nice. Uh, but other than that, it's you know it's fairly standard. It's just as minimal as possible, really, so there's less to go wrong. Yeah, and you mentioned that you've done a couple of phase one. Uh, 172 bits on. So you done uh, phase one throttle, throttle body. body yeah. yeah. So phase one throttle body. I run all the phase one electrics and the ECU uh, purely because on campus, uh, you know, anything goes wrong. Dead simple. Yeah. Um, just your normal track day sort of stuff that you need on it. An oil cooler. Yeah. Uh, I'm running the PMS rad, uh, which is the VW rad, slightly smaller radiator. Uh, and I also run a, a hydraulic clutch on it as well now. Okay. Uh, which is just a Whirlwood Master and stuff like that. Nice one. So, what sort of power is this producing now? Uh, last time it was dynoed, it made 198 horsepower. Okay. Um, which, you know, it's 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 decent enough on you know on, I know the ported and polished in looks, but it's you know it's, it's a decent power mark. So I yeah. So I mean, I've been saying to a few people because obviously I've done a K20 in mine, yeah, yeah. and they say that it's big, out the factory Renault engines, the FOR are so highly strong anyway yeah, to yeah. get power out of. So I mean, even when you it's 172 or they're meant to be 172 horsepower, they're running what like low to mid 160s yeah, so they, are they? They, they barely make. I think you know 165 when they when they people started playing with them at flat, yeah. and then you know through the years people have. You know, slowly affect them a little bit more, and you know, Chris IFI, he ma he did the mapping on this. Yeah. He, you know, he, he's done a really good job. And, yeah. You know, he knows his Renaults. I mean. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I mean, like getting 200 horsepower out of one of these is a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To say the least. So I mean, the the good anyway, the quick engines anyway, and you've utilised that, and you ma made it yeah, a lot a lot quicker. I didn't. You know, I I like my last Clio. There was a Megane engine in that, and. Um, you know, it's not that 
I couldn't drive it. I just didn't like to drive it. <laughs> uh, you know, it was a bit too much of a, of a handful for me. And yeah. I like thought the Scream NA. You know, yeah. I do like it. So yeah, I think NA is is the way with these. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. So just moving on to onto the chassis. So we got some we got some K Tech top mounts. Yeah. Yeah, K Tech top mounts on Spax RSX coilovers. Yeah. Um, I've used them for a little while now. Yeah. Uh, we've got the Wilwood brakes. Yeah. Um, so, so what pads are on them? Uh, the EBCRP ones, I think they are. Okay, so they're like the the trap. They're trap tra pads. Trap pad, yeah. This yeah. the new one with the stainless backing. Um, I rate them. Yeah. I've always found EBC to be a touchy subject when it comes to people's <laughs> opinions. So yeah. Tires wise, we got AR ones all around. Yeah. yeah. I use the AR ones for now. Um, I I do like them. I mean, I've only these done two track days before this one at Anglesey. Yeah. And I butchered them, <laughs> but it's, uh, Alton Park seems to be a bit lighter on the tyres, it doesn't seem to do as much damage on them. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing we're all fully polybushed? Uh, no, there's uh, no? actually no polybushes on it at all, okay. it's all on bearings. So, okay. Um, lower arms, rear beam, yeah. they're all on bearings. Uh, the only bushes that are actually on the car are the anti-roll bar bushes and that's oh, right. it. Well. Uh, and they're power flex ones again, like just nice. to, to beef them up. Sweet. So we just go. We start from the from the back because we got Team Dynamics Pro S 1.2s, 15s. Are they all round? Yeah. 15s, yeah. 7J. Sweet. Just a standard size wheel, really. And and this is a little bit different, and people are probably wondering what's going on here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So do you want to tell us about this? Uh, yeah. So uh, when I bought the car, it actually come with a fuel cell already fitted. Yeah. Um, again. It, Bit of a novelty thing more than anything. I I wouldn't say it performs any better than a standard tank, but it was in. Okay. I just finished it off. Uh, two pumps. So one's a pickup pump. Yeah. To the swivel pot, and then obviously you send the pump to the uh, front of the yeah, the front of the car. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously it's just a fuel filler, but yeah, swivel pot system just to make sure there's no fuel surge and stuff like that. Yeah. Although these tanks aren't going to cope with fuel surge, but they don't. <laughs> Thing, yeah. That's fair enough. Touchy subject, eh? Touchy subject. <laughs> so we got uh, safety devices, roll cage, full full cage. It's full cage with yep. uh, Mark Fish Motorsport enhancements, so it's just welded through to the struts and stuff like that. Okay. Just little bits and bobs, really. I mean, it is only a bolting cage, but you know, it's minimal. That's what was needed in my eyes. Okay. And you you done a uh, rear rear strut or strength in it? Uh, yeah. So again, this was another thing that was already welded in. Yeah. People put struts on top of the shocks, but yeah. it's just a case of fitting it and forgetting about it. Really, it's just once it's welded in, it's in, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, of course. I don't have to worry about sticking any uh, me shopping in the back. So, <laughs> so uh, just, just moving on to onto the back, we got. Uh, but this isn't uh, a pure motorsport exhaust or anything. This is a custom made one, yeah. Uh, yeah, by a local firm, uh, by me. Um, Mike Longlife, um, I think the guy called it goes by, but yeah, I wanted um, I wanted a, a silence on it and a resonator sort of thing. Yeah. So I had no problems with any sound uh, issues. Okay, is it a fiberglass boot lid as well? Or? Uh, yeah, fiberglass yeah. boot and doors and a carbon fiber bonnet. Wow. Uh, it's just a carbon skin bonnet with yeah. um, like a carbon. Um, call it like carbon fiberglass stuff on the inside, yeah. so it is only a single skin, but it weighs less than four kilos. So yeah, we were saying about the uh, the weight of it earlier off camera. Yeah. So this is is actually been weighed. It had uh, how much fuel in it was it? Uh, it had half a tank in it. Yeah. Uh, which is only 15 liters. But that's normally what I run. I don't like to go too heavy on the back. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was 900 kilo on the dot. Yeah. And there's there's stuff really I I could take out. And yeah. Go lighter. With. Really? Mm. Uh, but 900 kilos are nice, it, especially when it was it was literally dead on to the amps. Yeah, yeah. That is, uh, spot on, that yeah, is spot on. on. Right, so just moving on to inside. So talk me through this. So we got a uh, full full wrap round. What's uh, what brand is this? It's unbranded. It's unbranded. It's okay. Unbranded. But okay. That's the reason why I put my well, I kind of put my logo on it. It's yeah. Off now, like, but. Um, yeah, it's an unbranded seat. Um, it was I bought it to trial how I felt about the wraparound. Yeah, I've never got around to buying an expensive seat really. I've yeah. just kept it in place. That's right. Okay. It's nice and light, and fiberglass. Yeah. Nice. And you're sitting a little bit lower and further back uh, on the John Foz front. Is it Froz or Froz? You call yourself? Uh, yeah. And then the, it's the Pure Track um, side mounts, which I I did struggle with side mounts for quite a while. Yeah. Um, and then the 
Uh, I bought these and these were spot on really. Nice, right. uh, and then I just used the uh, run the loop harnesses. Yeah. Uh, just the four point. Nice. So uh, say about or say about wheel. Yeah. Um, dash. What dash we got in there? Because uh, it's a race technologies dash two. Yeah. Um, which is again, I, I've always wanted one. Yeah. And I thought, why not? It, it works easier because I've got the phase one electrics, so yeah. it's all 12 volt and 5 volt references and stuff like that. Sweet. Um, and we got a uh, different pedal box. Yeah, uh, OPP pedal box, uh, and obviously the floor's been raised a little bit there. Yeah. Um, again, this is why it's not very user friendly on the road, but yeah. it is. You, when you drive a pedal box, it's completely different, you know, especially running the, just the twin master cylinders on okay, the brakes yeah. and stuff. Sweet. And we got, is that PMS shifter? PMS shifter, yeah. bog standard PMS shifter. Nice. A slight improvement over the, uh, <laughs> over the other one, but not, it's, still not, it's still a Renault gearbox, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got Tilton, Tilton Reservoir. Yeah, yeah, just the masters. Uh, People always say you should put them inside, but yeah, I just like it's nice to keep an eye on stuff really. Yeah, else. yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, nice bit of kit that mate. So we got some. Uh, so you said the fiberglass doors. All yeah, all fiberglass. Yeah. Um, the only place that I took holes or two underneath the doors and stuff. Okay. I just to shred some more weight out of them. Like, uh, but yeah, it was. Uh, I think these are CM components ones. Okay. Uh, so, so the nice. Uh, but, yeah, they weigh. Weigh nothing. They weigh nothing, sort of thing. <laughs> um, they got a nice tasty roof scoop as well. Yeah, again, same components. Uh, obviously, everyone says this is the ugly one, but <laughs> it's the functional one. It does, it does work. And you know, on a hot day when you've got the vents open, yeah, that is the only thing that keeps you cool in this car. Is it? It, does, it gets hot. Yeah, I bet it does. <laughs> I bet it does. Well, I must say. It's, uh, it look it looks spot on, mate, and it's it's clean as well. It's a nice clean build. Yeah, I tried to keep it looking as OEM as possible. I think, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's you were saying that the um, the one seven twos they don't come in red, do they? This was a different uh, colour so initially. Yeah, it was sprayed. It was a flavour to begin with, um, and then it was sprayed in a. It, it is a Renault red, but yeah. um, it's not trophy red. Okay. So I think it's closer to the the one that they do in the Megan, the okay. 250, Got ya. Uh, which is a slight, I think it's a slight different one, but it is, I can't remember the colour code. Yeah. Uh, it is, you know, it, it's I, it's different, you know, they, you don't see many of them in red other than the trophies, and, you know, God forbid if you cut a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, expensive game that, expensive game. We are um, buzzing for this one, mate, yeah. and a uh, big follower of the channel as well, so thank you very much for the support. But, uh, don't forget to to give Dave a follow. Uh, I'll put his Instagram below yeah, as well. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> get, give it a click and uh, and yeah, follow his journey. Uh, just warming up. So these pedal boxes, if you're not used to them, they're they're really close together and you, your feet can get middled up a little bit. And it's happened to me a few times. No power steering on this, so it will take a little bit of getting used to. It really pressed down hard on them brakes, a little bit like George's 197 that I drove. But this feels like it is absolutely on rails. Change of direction, really nice. You're gonna put a, you're gonna put a lot of a lot of effort into into turning the wheel but you can feel it exactly where they are build up a nice bit of speed now One thing I'll say is this car definitely gives you a workout. Really raw, we're in third gear. In 
to second. And the limiter, we really feel that cut off on the limiter there. Into fourth. Hold on the brakes again. are good but you've really got to press hard on that pedal using that torque these F4R engines have got more torque than the K20 
nice and low to the floor. And this is exactly what you need in a Renault, in a Clio Mo 182. I'm sitting far too high in it. But yeah, the effort that's got to be put into turning a wheel, well... Doesn't feel like it's understeering or oversteering or anything. Really nice and direct handling that track. Anything that I'm throwing at it, it's handling it. And this is what you can make your Clio if you do a fair bit to it. the brakes are feeling to be fair unless I'm just getting used to putting that amount of pressure on but yeah that torque NA is the way as they say Nice car this. And this is why they're so good on a the track. They're nice and cheap. Obviously you can spend a lot of money on it, but fairly cheap and you can just turn it into an absolute weapon if you spend the money in the right places. Yeah, massive thank you to Dave for letting me have a go in this. Uh, it's something that we've uh, been planning on doing for a long time to be fair. And, uh, as always, life gets in the way and other plans change. But yeah, I think that the main thing is, like, I feel nice and comfortable in it. I'm really having to work at that steering wheel and that PMS shifter, it just, just don't feel quite right. Maybe even just put, leave it standard and, uh, and it'll feel better. I mean, I don't know if you can get, or you could get the, I think you can get a 0 0.1 uh, shifters for it and they're meant to be a lot better. But yeah, I hope you did enjoy the video. Uh, don't forget to give Dave a follow on Instagram as well. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I shall see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.